Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is the professor with Day Trading for Success. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the intraday volume profile. So on the other two videos I have about this, it isn't exactly um, how I use it. And recently, when I was a group of, with a group of people and I was showing them live, everybody was like, dude, that's not what you say in your videos. <laughs> so um, there is one difference that I didn't show. So sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. I will show that today. Um, <clears throat> please, and I also go over a couple of other things, and I'll build it with you here so that there's just no confusion. All right. I'll talk a little bit about importing these things as well. I am going to make a video since there seems to be so many questions about importing all the free custom scripts, and people are having trouble getting them. <clears throat> Most people are not, and some people are, and I know they think it's not their fault. But it's your fault. No, I don't know. I, I, it could be something <clears throat> glitchy with the, the platform that you're using. I, I you know, somehow, I, who knows? But <clears throat> I get it to work every single time. <laughs> Does that make you feel good? Not really, probably. But anyway, so please read this disclaimer. I'm a not a licensed. I'm not. I'm a not a. I am not a licensed financial advisor. Uh, this channel is strictly for entertainment purposes only. So hopefully, we try to give you some tips and tricks and demonstration videos that help you in your trading journey should not try to emulate this strategy without speaking to a professional that you trust or any of the strategies I show. You can certainly emulate the layouts though without speaking to a professional. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this is my, I was just in a competition myself. By the way, guys, there um, the worldwide competition's coming up. <coughs> There's a lot of traders in those. It's always kind of fun. But I was recently in a competition. This is the layout that I used. I did really well with it. Um, and uh, I recently just did a small share uh, video too. That's why this is set at 25. But in the competition, I was trading 1,000 shares. So, But anyway, this is what I ended up using after tweaking it a bunch to compete. <coughs> God, I still have this cough, guys. I don't know what it is. I can't shake it. So sorry. Um, so I'm going to break this down so you see what's here. Um, and then, you know, you guys can get all these custom scripts individually as well. Hopefully, those of you that are still having trouble loading, maybe I'll, I can take care of that today by showing you the process of how to do that. Okay, so anyway, um, let me start with the volume profile for those that you want to do it. So it is set up right now, and I'm going to get rid of it so we can build it together. This is what you see me trade all the time. All right, I'm actually going to reverse these. I'm going to put the green arrows on the bottom and the red arrows at the top, like danger. Go. The arrows are saying, be careful, it's going to go the way, other way. And the green arrows are saying, hey, it's going to go back up. If you, This is if you're a long trader. This was actually set up if you're trading short. So I trade short a lot too, but most people are just trade, you know, long. Um, but uh, so I'm going to change that. I'm going to show you all the different ways I set this up so that it travels right with us, which has become so important. And now so many people are emulating how I trade this because they can see it makes a difference. Now, um, those of you volume profile experts, and I know I talked to a guy who actually wrote a book about the volume profile. So um, it's past data. And there's a lot of logic that says you can't, you, you can, you can read it by, um, looking at the valleys, the, the, the troughs and peaks when it's set up over on the right side of your screen. <coughs> and you can see where it's going to move up and down. There's all kinds of strategies involved with that. I have used those strategies many times. There's nothing wrong with them. But I really set it up for intraday in a way that I had never seen it used before. I thought other people were doing this. Maybe they are. Maybe I'm not, you know, I'm not claiming ownership or anything. Um, but this is what I do. Guys, it seems like no matter what I say, I get a, I get an email. So I'm a little defensive about uh, how I word things, but so um, I'm not claiming ownership for the, this. Is uh, just how I set it up. <coughs> um, so anyway, sorry. Let me just get a drink here. The afternoon, I have my iced tea. Do you like that little slurp sound? Um, and then in the mornings, I, of course, I have the coffee, like every other red-blooded soul. So let me break this down. So I, rather than go over it more now, I'm just going to get inside here. 
You can see how I have my chart set up, by the way. So I have the nine moving average to 20. This is the volume profile that we're talking about. I have the VWAP. And then on the one minute that I'm trading, I have the simple moving average for the daily, 50, 100, and 200. Now that's different than the exponential moving average, right? This is showing me the solid day, no predictions of current data. On my five minute, which I was over here, I'll show you again in a second, I do have the, uh, the EMA set up. So, and then I'm still using the Rock and the Million Dollar Margin Club scalping indicator. We have one for DTS too. And then I use a seller's indicator mostly because of the competition. Um, I got so proficient with this that I wanted every advantage. Um, and now the difference between those two, I will go over again in a minute. Actually, you know what? I'm going to probably forget. So let me come right back to this and just talk to you about these if you're not familiar with them. So this is the scalping indicator. The red is the uh, sellers and the green is the buyer and the blue represents the volume. This is a histogram. So after the level two, oh God, let me just, I wasn't going to really do this, but I'll go ahead and do it. After the level two, you know, is happens, then you'll see the time and sales, which I don't have up on this one because I don't read it to do in my competitions or the trading that I do with you guys. <coughs> um, so that that as soon as that action happens, you know, it shows a receipt of what the sale was made and then it transfer that data that data over to a chart and at the same time it can do it with a histic you know, with candlestick pattern. You can use different patterns and things. I most people like candlesticks. And then at the same time the data gets into a histogram showing those movements, reflecting those here. So um, but what this is doing besides just showing you it's showing you the sentiment with inside the volume candle, like how many were buyers and how many were sellers and what is that volume. And, and as you, you can kind of, you can read that all right here and really good people can read it all right here. You don't, you don't need to have this, but it just makes it a lot easier to kind of see the sentiment. And after a while, I got really good at reading the sellers indicators, which just shows the sellers. So um, I found that this, you could start to really pick out the picture within the picture and see the pattern easier than seeing the pattern here. As I saw the actual level, like here's, here's that same candle right here. So look at the difference here. So you can really see, well, how many sellers were in there compared to buyers? You know, what, what was the level of that? So it, it kind of just helps you read that a little a different way and a little bit better so both of these custom scripts are available on our channel so you can get those for free um, i also have over here on the five minute a couple of other custom scripts that i use i don't normally do this but again for the competition i did uh, let me get this done why is that doing that pattern done Okay, there we go. Yeah. So this tells me when I take a trade, now you can see it other places, but it's going to put it right here so I don't have to look at my um, l uh, my active trader to see. So I, I sometimes shrink that because I don't want to see the actual, sh you know, the amount of what I have in the open trade. So I use this. This is a custom script that's available as well for free. And then the enhanced volume indicator is showing you the same thing as those scalping indicators, but in a little bit different way, just sort of like filling up uh, the, the volume, you know, the candlestick um, uh volume here it's not really called a candlestick too but i mean this is actually the volume so it's showing you the strength of that within so all of those in my opinion are better than just seeing the typical volume levels that you see on any given chart these are all like souped up easier for you to read to take a quick you can really quickly see what the last candle was what the existing to see is the as the volume goes up it, you know has has suddenly it gone way past the last candle so you know you're strong in the move short or down so again the data is already there it's just different ways to read it faster and then i have the macd down here too and uh, i do use that on occasion um to just help to quick verification here <laughs> quick look quick verification here and then you're looking for lineup with the one minute and the five minute and you're looking for patterns right right now here this pattern's telling me it's about to go up that's what this pattern says right here. So that's an inverted hammer at the, at the end of a down five minute trend. So this should be going up on the five minute. If you look at the one minute, it's not quite saying that yet. I mean, you could call this a, uh, a bearish tweezer, though it's not lined up, which would mean it would go down. But the five minute, the bigger move is telling you to go up. So this is not perfect alignment 
for a trade. So I would be worried about just jumping in long here. But now you can see the scalping indicator is telling you that it is about to go up. So, but now, now you have down here a hammer, again, a reversal sign with the one minute. Now they're lined up for this stock is telling you it's about to go up according to the patterns. Now that does not mean that it will. <laughs> I'm just telling you those two patterns line up. So what would you do next? You'd look at the enhanced volume indicator. It's saying seller, seller, sellers. MACD saying seller, seller, seller. This is saying the buyers kind of went down with the volume and then the sellers are going up. So unless this makes a quick reversal in this one minute, which is not too much time left, well, you still got 25 seconds. This could pop up. These are telling you it's gonna pop up. I might've taken a trade there if I was ready to trade right now. Um, based on what I saw, but uh, you know, you know what they say. You know what Mark Douglas says, right? Count on all your trades failing first. So, uh, anyway, let me get back to what I was doing. I just didn't want to forget to talk about all that stuff. So I'm going to go now into the volume. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of the volume profile. So there it goes. Apply. It's gone. So we just got a screen. Oh, by the way, though, that's the SMAs, the daily, the true dailies. So you know, if you're anywhere near those. When you're scalping on a one-minute chart, beware of those being potential reversals or supports, you know, support or resistance or reversal from when you're starting to come to it. Okay, so now we've got a, we're starting from scratch. I'm going to enter this, right? So put in volume. There it is. So you, you left-click on it. You add selected. And now it's over here, right? But now we're going to do all the fun changes inside. So I go inside. You're going to want to make sure that this is on day. Okay, you're going to want to make sure that this yes says no. I like to lower the opacity so it's not so bright on the screen. So it's literally behind my candlesticks. You want to change that. And then I'm going to get down to where you do those little arrows that you see. So here now I'm going to go ahead and change. So this is the high. So I'm going to tell you when it gets up to the high that it might just be about to turn around. Here's where you pick your arrow. So I'm going to pick the down arrows. So now when it goes up to the high, it's going to show you red arrows going down. And then I go to the low. I pick green. I'm going to pick the up arrows. So now that's basically all you do. Uh, you, can, you can set these things too. But let's just take a look at this. I don't usually do that. And I'll apply and say OK. Now there is something else I didn't show you. It was the aha moment for everybody. But let me just get this. My microphone's blocking what I can see. So what happened on that last candle? Oh, it did go up. See, did I, did I not tell you? Did I not tell you? There it goes. Just took a second on the five minute. So that called it. Ha, I'm vindicated. It looks like it was going to go down. Um, so anyway, there's it. So as it starts to come up, that's just one more warning, one more edge. Maybe as you're in the upper level of the volume profile value that maybe you should think about, it's losing some of its um, uh, upward movement. And then down here, maybe it's losing some of its downward movement. Maybe. It's all maybes, but there's just one more thing that you use. In the center is the point of control. Here's the, the what I changed the opacity on. So right now, uh, this is Tesla. Yeah, Tesla's pretty slow. The news, the news hasn't been great on Tesla lately. Excuse me. I used to trade this stock all the time. And now I'm more like trading the video all the time. But this used to be so exciting to trade. And now it's kind of it's kind of boring. But and it's really hard to predict because, you know, the uh, I'll break into a little analysis. You've got, you know, the electric cars has got a huge future, but then you've got um, Musk, who's like being hated by most of the liberals who want to buy electric cars because they care more about the environment than uh, I shouldn't say that. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> no good. Um, yeah, it's not a political thing. I'm just saying, out there. Politically, he is now there's a very negative point of view about him and you never know what he's going to say. I remember when I bought um, I was really going to make money on Dogecoin because he was coming on Saturday Night Live. Does any, any of you people remember that? Mark Cuban was pushing it. They were going to pay all the basketball players with the Dogecoin that they they made and they all this hoopla. So I dropped a lot of money in Dogecoin as he was coming on Saturday Night Live thinking, oh, my God, it's going to go shh through the roof, right? Not just me, a lot of other people that I knew did as well. And then what is must come on? I don't remember the exact word on Saturday night, basically saying that the coin is a joke. They made it up. It's not worth, it almost just said it's not worth anything. 
<laughs> it was just market was closed, of course, in, in the U.S. when he said all this stuff for Saturday Night Live, and there was just a, just it just dove down to like I don't know. You can look back and see a sharp decline. Everybody lost a fortune. So, uh, so anyway, Tesla. How did I? How come I brought that up? Yeah. So the stuff with Musk and Tesla. So sometimes I look at it and I still. That's just my point of view, by the way. Just, you know, everybody has their own point of view about it, but I'm very worried about, which I think could be a great company because of who's running it. So you got this genius on one end and you don't know what he's going to do to sabotage the company on the other end. So that, that's why it's kind of, it's too bad because now uh, what's her name for uh, Motley Fool thinks that this is uh, Kathy, um, what's her last name? Anyway, she believes that she's, she's dumping her NVIDIA and dropping all of her money in Tesla for all the people and they're recommending in a Motley Fool for long-term five-year plan. And then she picked out two AI stocks, which I can't think of the name of them, but you can just, Kathy Wood, you can just look up Kathy Wood and they'll talk about the two stocks um, because they have so much more room to make a play. And I am going to invest in both of those stocks just, you know, just because a lot of other people will because of what she said. And they're really, really cheap. So look up Kathy Wood, what's two stocks she says. I'm not a huge believer in her because she lost so much money for all the people um, early on with all the whatever. So anyway, look her up, but uh, just giving you some inside information. So one of the other things that um, I uh, you have to do on this that was the big aha moment. Here we are. I know I, I talked around it forever. Under time frame, it has to say today. I said on the videos one day. So when I say one day, it's a completely different look, right? And uh, it, it, it's not, it's not, I mean, it actually doesn't look too different here, but it typically it's a t completely different look when you're on the same day. But so, yes, you want to go to today right here. Scan that up. Boom. Right? So there you go. So... Now that's how you get this volume profile. Now let me talk to you a little bit about how I trade it. Um, now you saw how I just called the patterns out. And if you watch my, my trading videos, you'll see that I do that all the time. So let me see if this is a good enough trade where I can show you how I trade this right now. We'll do a, we'll do a live trade. So I'm looking at the pattern. So right now I would read this where since the point of control is up here, it's this is where most of the price action was. Remember, this is stuff that already happened, but that's all we have when we trade. So if something's already happened up here, more of it up here, I'm looking for signals that it's going to go back up here. So it's been kind of a slowly sloping trend down. Here's a dragonfly telling you it's going to go up, and it went up right after that dragonfly. Now we've got sort of a, a tweezer move telling you it's going to go down. But, and that didn't form until the end of this, but now indecision back up, sort of a, a gravestone, um, uh, nothing really, nothing really. I mean, you could call that a, uh, a shooting star, but it's just too fat. It's really consolidating here. My God, this is the worst time to show you guys a trade. I don't think anything's going to happen here. But all of these are showing reversal to go up. So why don't I just take a, a quick, mark? I'll just take a quick buy there and... Uh, See if I can make, what do I have, 25 shares? Okay, this should go up. That's what I would predict based on this volume profile and that, there it goes. So it did go up. So I'll just take a quick profit there, $3. So it might still go, it's going up to the point of control. That's a little stronger move than I thought it would do. Now, typically I would make support and resistance lines and stuff and have a lot more to go on. I was kind of throwing myself into the wind there that because that could have, you know, done something else. But it had a line up here, the same thing, reversal pattern, reverse spinning top, reversal pattern, right? Read your patterns, day trading volume two, day trading volume three, learn your patterns. I'll have a link to the books, okay? Um, I mean, you guys see us mostly trade the RV strategy where everybody's making hundreds of thousand dollars, two people over, I'm, I'm not selling a course here, so it sounds like I'm advertising, I'm about to tell you something, you know, but to two people over a million dollars trading that strategy that we started last March, and I trade that here all the time, and that's in Day Trading Volume 1. So those three books, Day Trading Volume 1, 2, and 3, there'll be a link to, I will also set up, uh, I'll also give you a link to this layout. Now, remember, also, before I forget why I'm talking about the books, uh, Trading in the Zone, Mark Douglas, must read to help you kind of understand that you need to just count on every trade losing. 
and then just try to get an edge and then play the probabilities. That's just a very brief synopsis. You want to read the book. Um, Best Loser Wins has a totally different way. One of the things that I really liked about his book, which I'll have a link to, was that he lets the winners run forever. He doesn't set, for the most part, doesn't say, and he argues about it. And it's always the way I have felt is until it shows it's going to turn around or even starts to turn around, let it ride, you know. But now when you're scalping, you have to make that decision very quickly, like, hey, it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn around. You'll see me reverse constantly and just try to manage a losing position. See this right here, Morningstar, right here at the top. It's not really a trend, but this is a reversal pattern showing it's going to go back down. So, again, this is sort of the same thing, but it's not closed. The problem with calling patterns right here is we don't ha you you call patterns based on upward and downward trend. We have such a consolidation that I'm really calling the tight pattern. So you know it's every, it's it, it, it that was a real almost 50 50 when I called that. I mean I look like a genius, but I mean you know in my mind I did anyway. <laughs> but no, I mean it should have happened, but more likely than not. But still, the, you know there's been a big argument about now. Remember. I'm giving you a lot of little information you may or may not want here, but w when COVID hit, 40 million, 40 million, 40 million, is that right? 40 million, or is it 4 million? Oh, God, now I'm not sure. But anyway, new traders came in, I think it's 40 million, came into the market. And one of the things that happened that not a lot of people are talking about, because most of these bigger patterns are figured on... Um, Day day patterns. So you go to a day chart and you and you look at the. Um, I want to remember two guys to go over how to download this stuff. Uh, oh, I thought I had a day chart down here. No, I didn't. Let me just put a day chart in here. Let's add a chart. Okay, we'll show you how to do that real quick, and then we'll go to stuff I have saved. So load style. So I have a day here somewhere. There's daily with trend alerts. Do I have another day? Uh, no, okay, so I'll just take that. So that's a busy day chart. But um, anyway, uh, get that down here, lock it here, and then we'll go into here. We'll maximize what we'll get rid of this grid. Uh, this still has other stuff on it. And that's, the, that's also a custom script. And now since I've got it on here, I'll make it available. The whole layout, it'll be available. I'll make it with the layout available. And then I set the ATR. So I usually have these. And then I made these are thick lines for the moving averages on a daily. But the new, the new daily swing uh, strategy that I'll be sharing with you guys in the next few months and still being tested is basically you just read patterns on the dailies. And there's a bunch of other criteria that you use to pick the stock to go up or down that day. I, I, you've probably seen the video that I have that, picks, that, that helps you pick the direction of the market. Well, this is one that uh, this is gonna, there's going to be one. Like the open strategy in the Trading Journal logbook, the original open strategy has the criteria for that. There'll be a link for that too. Um, but there's going to be another strategy to pick a stock for the day, close at end of day, a swing slash day trade. I call it a swing because I'm a scalper, right? But it, some people would say it's got to go two days a week, whatever. It can't be one day and be a swing. Well, if I play it the whole day, I think about it as a swing. But And then you're setting, you're, you're trading in brackets or alarms. And basically with the criterion, you're able, you're, you're getting an edge to call the direction of that stock. So for that day only. So that's what we've been trading lately. Uh, all of us have been taking trades, and now we're putting together a criterion to help you guys um, emulate that. And then I'll be making, uh, I'll be doing some trades in the morning. I'm going to try to set up so I can live stream them with you guys. I'll be taking some straight tradings in the morning, and then we'll the next day we'll talk about how they went and stuff like that. Now that's a little ways out. I don't even know how to stream or anything like that, but. Um, it's something I feel a little more comfortable with rather than you trying to follow along with quick scalping and um, something I have not done, you know, yet on a stream or anything like that. So I would be very concerned about you losing money. But on the day thing, uh, and this was approached to me, would I consider that? And I, and I would consider that because, you know, you all make your own trades. And then as long as you have a stop loss, I feel a lot better about that. But anyway... My point was about the daily is most patterns 
before COVID, not, some traders used them intraday, but most are just figured for daily. You know, sometimes, I mean, the candlestick pattern. I mean, okay, I'm going to get emails. Obviously, you can use them on five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour, four hour. Obviously, people look at them, but I'm just saying make a decision um, by looking at a big, bigger pattern. Now, I, we're making decisions based on bigger patterns, yes, but mostly the last two, right? So and this is a particularly hard one. Is this a weekend? Was this a – no, I'm on live here. This is a huge gap. Uh, it's surprising. But that would be a, a hammer at the bottom of that. This is an inverted hammer, and that's another hammer, and that's a shooting star. It's a very weird action here. Uh, and now we have – since you have a doji right there – that is more, since you would call that a downward trend, that is a bull doji. So if I were to guess just on this, tomorrow, this stock's going up. If I just, You can see if I'm right or wrong. I mean, I would want to have more criteria if there's news, catalysts, you know, what are the ratings of the, for the stock that particular day? Did new ratings come out? There's a bunch of criteria to go by. Um, what's the pre-market look like? Very important, you know. But if I just had this one thing and somebody said, if you had to do it, what would you bet? I'd bet Tesla's going up tomorrow. We'll see what happens. It's going to probably prove me wrong. But my, my point was now patterns are being used for intraday a lot more. There's all these new traders that came in. And then now because they can move the stock as a collective like institutional traders can. They can actually move the stock as a collective. So if enough people look at um, this uh, layout here, let me shrink this down. So if enough people, you know, call the same thing that I saw, you saw, like right here, this is a no brainer right here, right? This is a hammer reversing this. So this is a spinning top reversing this with an inverted hammer reversing this so this is an alignment to go up and it did go up and it, it should continue to go up honestly except for this rickshaw man so i mean these you look for these patterns and then you look for other obviously you can look at level two too you'd want to have support and resistance lines and then you'd want to look to see is it being verified with the strength of the volume the last candle compared to this candle what's the seller seller's indicator was strong volume has just been we'll look, we'll look at a stair step up so this, this one scares me to ride it too long. I'd probably want to take the profit right here uh, based on that, somewhere in this area, because I can't depend on it because of this indecision here. Boom, you did way better. But that was an easy pattern to call with easy alignment, right? Easy. So as you can see, the sellers, look on the, uh, this is why I'm looking at, like, looking at the enhanced. Look how the sellers dropped as it was going down. The confidence, the loss of confidence, volume dropping with the sellers. Like, hey, you know, we're we're tired of going down. There's not enough uh, not enough people that want to go down. Now this is starting to form an indecision candle. Let's wait to see what it closes. I know I'm giving you a little trading lesson, which is wasn't I wasn't going to be what I intended. But um, anyway, so let's talk about how you would get this layout in. So I'm going to go over to setup here. Now these are all the different layouts that I have, but you would be, um, once you, you see the, uh, okay, so let's see, when you, you go to your, uh, on the YouTube channel, you're going to have a, uh, let me just grab something here. I have uh, some of my videos right here. Let me just find a video and see if I can uh, open up something here. I've got to find one that has a, uh, let me see, episode 83 has a whole bunch of them. So let me open up episode 83 so we can really walk through this. This is 10 custom scripts. So I'll do the five-minute grid because that's not here right now. So I'm going to highlight the five-minute grid, and I'm going to copy it. So I have now just copied the highlight the, uh, a um, custom script. Wow, look at it go. I wish I would have dropped in my 25 shares there. I'd have 50 bucks. Um, so now I would go to setups. So it's just been highlighted and copied, right? So I go to setup and I say open shared item. So you're going to push control V and it enters in there. Preview it. You can name it anything you want. There's the name of this right here. All right. I'm actually going to just in case it's going to say it's already. I'm just going to put another. Oops. It's not letting me do that because I got to push uh, uh, shift first. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to import now. So it's just imported, right? 
So now I'm going to go find it. It's in here. So if you weren't doing part of that process, so I just entered a new one and I put this next to it, this little dash, so the uh, hyphen, so now I know this is the right one. So I'm going to click on that. Now this is actually, oh, <laughs> this probably isn't going to work. This is for Thinkorswim. I mean for TD Ameritrade. I just loaded the one from TD Ameritrade. Let's see if it goes in. Maybe it'll work. Hey, it worked anyway. Look at that. Maybe they've got it so you can use them both. But that's the five-minute grid, which, by the way, is another custom script that's available. And why do I use that? I'll show you why I use that if you don't already know. And I'm surprised they didn't have this up for the competition. So I should have. So now, without looking at the clock, I know that the five-minute candle it's just one more way to be faster, guys. The five-minute candle is about to, to change. So I would look over at my five-minute and say, what are the five the people that only trade the five-minute and don't have a one-minute chart even open, what are they thinking right now? Now, how you would read this pattern if you're a five-minute reader, you look at this wick. It's highly important to look at the wick. Let me just kind of make that a little – oops, let me make that just a little bigger – if this wick, oh, so it closed with no upper and lower, so that, that should mean this is going to go up. That should mean it's going to go up. Now, it's not doing it, but that's what it, what it showed on the five-minute. But see, the five-minute, they're not seeing this yet. I mean, they are a little bit, but now on the one-minute, I'm looking at it, it's, gotta, it's, really still, it's, it's, it's not really um, telling you anything other than you got a strong move up. So now you have to look at some of the other things. But as you can see, it's starting to go up just like the five-minute predicted. And that's by looking at now. You could say, oh, you just got lucky. It had nothing to do with the candlestick. Yeah, you could be right. <laughs> I'm not going to deny that you could absolutely be right. But I can also tell you uh, that it works more times than not, and you're just trying to get an edge. That's all. You, and then you have to be able to be able to react. Like right now, you should take profit. Now, as you see in my new open strategy, I'll have all these profit lines. It's like I'd rather take a profit, bank it, and then get back in again, you know. So already you have uh, on this one you had 96, of, you, you know, you had you had about – that was about 5 or 10 cents I think. Um, you know, this is now creating a doji, but it's not closed yet. So so if you were trading the, on this one minute though and knew it on the five minute, 165.94 all the way up to – uh, so you would have got uh, if you dropped say you say like me you would have dropped in 500 shares, you would have had um, 11 over 11 cents. So you would have had you know 50 50 bucks in a split second there, boom and got out. Now there would have been some probably slippage, so 30 bucks. So as I started to see this wick pull back and this close here and saw that this was a spinning top, I would have thought about getting out immediately. So I wouldn't even had as much money because I would have got out here and done a reverse and then i would have been picking up on this now usually when you get to the point of control you should expect some grinding now this is just moving so slow it's a terrible example of how to uh, you know to look at something because you, you know you want to see some up and down action here a little bit more but this is also very safe to trade you know because it's not tesla safe right how weird is that um so that's how you you um enter in now on the layout it's basically the same thing let me let me do a layout here um here's a layout the new rv layout okay so i'm gonna uh copy that and then i'm gonna get over here and i'm gonna say uh open shared item is that god now i'm thinking i'm trying to remember if i'm doing this right yeah, I think the layouts work the same. Yeah, preview. So new RV layout. Let me just put the name so I'm going to know what it is when I see it over here. I'll do something like that. Oops. Oh, those are not allowed in that? What did I do wrong here? Hmm. That is so weird. Okay. So open shared. Okay, so just import. All right, now... Let me go in and find that new RV layout. You're probably going to see it quicker than me. There it is. Okay, so I just loaded it in. There's an RV layout. 
And that's one trade I took earlier today before we switched stocks. So that was sad. And there it is. It's on NVIDIA. And this is a little different. This is one that has the time and sales up. And sometimes I have that. So this is this I actually haven't traded this layout in a while. But anyway, that's how you that's how you put them in. Um, which one was I on? Open strategy. Oh, I didn't save it. All that stuff I just did. Well, what are you going to do, right? Yeah, so this is something completely different. Oops. <laughs> that, that's the one I, that says last loaded, but uh, what's that one? Is this it? This might have been it. No, I don't know, guys. Sorry, but you saw it all there. Oh, no, I've got to be on the right one. Oh, what a maroon I am. Okay. Well, I will find, I will recreate it then. Yeah, because I didn't save it. Ah, that was so dumb. Um, all right, I'll just have to recreate the whole thing. So I'll put the, I'll put the five minute with everything on it. I'll do a daily with everything on it and I'll rebuild this before I put this video out. And that's really just a problem for me, not you. But uh, there's our there's our three twenty there's our three forty five on Tesla today. Yeah. Um, okay, guys. Well, listen. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that answered some of your questions. And I'll be showing you some more live trading real soon. All right. Stay green out there. Be careful.